Erin, welcome back. In this video, I want to discuss how to sit. As part of your introductory uh, package, one thing that is very important in, in yoga, we do sit. We sit more often than you think. And traditional yoga, in ancient texts, more so revolved around the sitting exercises, not so much up and down in doing. That has evolved once the, it came over into the Western Hemisphere. And so sitting is a little unique in how you want to think about it. It's more of a mindfulness practice, uh, one of your first ones. So here we go. Uh, you can use a bolster. You can use, I have my own little, you can find rice meditation uh, pillows to sit on. You can use a yoga blanket. You can use a couple of blocks. Whatever is most comfortable for you. What's most important is we're going to try not to sit with our knees so high above the hips. Because if you see this and sitting in this manner, and I'll even turn to the side so you can understand, where you're sitting like this, which let me make you feel better right now. About 85% of people begin seated like this. I did too. But let's think about this for a minute. With those knees coming up and we're sitting here and we're talking, um, all the circulation is puddling up right here. Yeah? And so that's going to get annoying very quickly on your body. And your body's going to start to um, sound off and start to tell you, hey, I need you to move around. I'm getting uncomfortable here. Well, that's the whole point. We're supposed to meet that discomfort with... No, I'm going to sit here a little longer and you're going to ride this out because we aren't in danger. Um, it's just uncomfortable. And isn't life uncomfortable at the moment? And so this is a great way to practice just calming down up there and not adding more stress. And so, and I'm already feeling it sitting like this. So there are a few ways we can work this. If you are really high up and you're feeling really tight or crossing the legs just really isn't an option at all, I'm going to recommend getting an actual dining room chair, something that you can sit in so at least those knees are going to be hip width, hip level. That way the puddling up doesn't just stay here. It's able to continue to flow. That's what's most important. We want to think about that circulation and make sure everything has a nice bit of constant movement and there's no blockages, okay? So the way that looks, and I'm still going to stay to the side so you can see this, when you sit on something and you elevate your seat, if you look, my knees are able to angle down. And then when you sit tall, your low back is actually able to drop down and relax. And then that tends to be a problem area for 99% of us all the time. And so we don't want that to become an issue too quickly so we can sit and breathe. We don't want to get distracted. When you come down, you have more of an arch and you're kind of dealing with it. Some people tip forward, some people are slouching. So this is giving you a nice little middle ground to work with. And this is how you just want to st start sitting. Now, with that out of the way, now that we can sit, get to where your knees are at least level with their hips, maybe angle down a bit if you're able to sit on the floor. And I want you just to close your eyes and just start to breathe, settling in here and trying to remain as still as possible for as long as possible. And it shouldn't take very long at all. But as you sit and breathe, notice where your hands go. Are your palms warm? Are the palms turned down? Does it feel better to turn the palms up? Are your fingertips relaxed? How's your shoulders? And we're just breathing here for a few moments and just start to notice where in your body starts to get loud and where does is it asking for adjustments. Um, you may start to feel a little more of a catch in that upper back to the right. You may feel more of a catch in that low left back. Maybe it's down in your feet. Um, if the floor is uncomfortable, pat it with a little blanket so that part is taken care of. Because the most important part when we sit down is to make sure we aren't getting distracted and we aren't wanting to move or wanting to stay present or wanting to stay centered without any distractions. And so it's almost like a private personal party for yourself of just quiet in being. And anybody who distracts that or keeps you from doing that, the body in this, in this conversation will distract you and will want you to move around. Try 
keep breathing. I'm going to give you two more breaths. Keep sitting with it. Notice how your mind is reacting. It can be panicking. It can be, this is the last I will ever do this. This is terrible. And then open your eyes, relax. Maybe lean forward over your legs. Make any adjustments you need here just to feel a little bit better. Arching the back, rounding out. And then just become nice and neutral and settle in. So with that simple exercise, that was the first exercise I was given whenever I went through my teacher training course for yoga. And that was the first time I was really taught the idea of facing the discomfort that I was feeling, even though it was small. I was just sitting there and my body was uncomfortable and my mind was panicking. The discomfort I can't deal with, but the mind panicking is where we want to start to um, hone in on. And so starting that simple practice of learning just to breathe with the, the discomfort, knowing that it will pass, it will not last forever. And the more often you do this, you'll notice over time you're going to be able to sit for longer before the body starts to speak up. And even if the body does speak up, you're gonna, it's going to be manageable because you know you aren't going to be there that long. In the traditional sense, my teacher's teacher uh, had told him, if you can sit perfectly still without moving a muscle for three hours, you've mastered Hatha Yoga. I've gone maybe 10, 15 minutes without moving a muscle, and that's brutal. And so to get to three hours without moving, that takes a lot of more so mental focus than actual physical. but. There is some physical to it. So yes, there is that. And depending on your career, what you have experienced in your lifetime, our bodies, our minds, we all carry that baggage in different ways. What's most important is we try to lighten our load as much as we can. And you'll hear me say this time and time again. And the whole idea behind this is being able to allow yourself just to rest physically, rest mentally, emotionally there's no demands here nothing like that just strip it all down in a way and let yourself just be you there is nothing there's no part of the world meant to interfere in this moment the time that you have on your mat and a lot of the times in yoga classes if you try other online classes elsewhere you'll find it plenty on our platform or if you go to gyms or if you go into studios again once those start to open up you're going to start to notice everybody sits. We sit. We do this towards the end of class to close. Maybe you do it at the beginning as well. And try once you start to feel those physical discomforts in the body, places that you want to adjust, be patient and try to understand and remind yourself that this is the practice. Um, I have found as a teacher more times than not, the way this is applied off your mat is when people are going in for to donate blood, if they have a hard time with needles, needles are a big thing, um, people who get their tattoos, uh, somebody who's gone to the dentist and who has a fear of the dentist. These are ways that they're able to work and try to help themselves get through those periods of anxiousness that they know they have to deal with, but there's still that internal struggle. These are the type of things where you can parallel that. And a simple practice is just learning to deal with the discomfort in your body. And know that it's not bad or good. It just is. Um, liberate yourself and try that middle path mindset of not one or the other. It just is. And there's a sense of freeing there for the internal self um, to be able not to have to label and identify and make a judgment in any way. Um, and this is how you begin to start to see yourself as you are and you start to love yourself. It's quite love. It's just wonderful. And so sitting with discomfort is going to be the primary theme um, throughout a lot of the uh, Sitting with discomfort will be um, a practice that you try to be mindful of throughout your days. Anytime you're uncomfortable, as long as you aren't in any danger, there's no pain, you aren't experiencing any type of injury of any sorts. Um, if it's just discomfort, sit with it. It will pass. It won't last forever. We only have 24 hours in the day and we all end up going home. So I hope this made sense to you. 
I'll see you in the next video.